good morning in this video we are going to discuss about adrenal function test adrenal function tests are the group of tests which are used to check whether the adrenal gland is functioning properly or not if it is not functioning properly it leads to disorders in other words we can say that adrenal function tests are the group of tests which are used to diagnose the various disorders of adrenal gland the major disorders associated with adrenal gland are Cushing syndrome which is uh, caused by excess cortisol production then primary hyperaldosteronism or corn syndrome which is characterized by excess aldosterone production and third one is adrenal insufficiency where the production of both cortisol as well as aldosterone will be decreased so these are the three major disorders now we will see how to diagnose all these disorders with the various adrenal function tests first let us start with cushing syndrome so whenever a patient comes to you with the signs characteristic signs and symptoms of cushing syndrome first of all you should confirm that all these symptoms are due to adrenal hyperactivity so how you can confirm this means by measuring serum cortisol level the normal serum cortisol level is 5 to 20 microgram per deciliter if it is more than 20 microgram per deciliter then you can confirm adrenal hyperactivity but there are two major problem with this serum cortisol levels the first one is it is highly fluctuating and it varies from time to time second thing almost more than 80% of the cortisol is found bound to cortisol binding globulin in the blood it is found bound to cortisol binding globulin and this globulin levels they can be highly influenced by both by various physiological as well as pathological conditions so whenever the cortisol binding globulin levels are altered it will also alters the cortisol levels and it will be showing high fluctuations because of these uh, disadvantages it is better to go for an alternate option actually we have three different alternate options for confirming adrenal hyperactivity the first option is going for 24 hour urinary cortisol estimation so when you go for 24 hour uh, cortisol urinary cortisol estimation the question of uh, uh, di diurnal variation is ruled out and since in urine cort urine cortisol is nothing but a free cortisol the question of co cortisol binding globulin is also ruled out so this is an alternative better way to confirm the adrenal hyperactivity if the urinary cortisol level is more than 80 micrograms per day on three different occasions then you can confirm the diagnosis next the second option is going for midnight cortisol level either in plasma or in saliva i just now i said that cortisol serum cortisol or any cortisol levels usually so shows diurnal variation it will be maximum during the early morning time and it will be at the least during the midnight time okay so least means it will be usually at around when you measure it at the midnight it will be usually less than 5 micrograms per deciliter but if it is more than that then you can confirm the diagnosis of adrenal hyperactivity or cushing syndrome okay next the third option the last option is low dose dexamethasone suppression test so here in this test what the what they will do means 1 mg of dexamethasone will be given to the patient okay at around 11 pm in the midnight then after that next day they will be measuring the serum cortisol level in the early morning around 7 am so normally what will happen means this dexamethasone is a analog for cortisol so okay so what will happen when you give this this uh, dexamethasone the artificial cortisol by feedback mechanism it will be inhibiting the acth production so if acth production is decreased what will happen to cortisol production that will be suppressed so the early morning cortisol level should always be less than 2 microgram per deciliter after the uh, uh, administration of dexamethasone but even after administration of dexamethasone if the early morning cortisol level is more than 2 microgram per deciliter then you can confirm the diagnosis of adrenal hyperactivity that means cushing syndrome so once you confirm you can all these options you can use it for confirming the diagnosis okay so either serum cortisol if you are going for serum cortisol better to go for the early morning serum cortisol at around 8 am alternatively you can go for 24 hours urinary cortisol or midnight cortisol or cortisol estimation after low dose dexamethasone suppression so these are the various options available for confirming the diagnosis once you have made the diagnosis the next thing is you should identify what is the cause for the cushing syndrome 
there are four major causes for Cushing syndrome. The first one is the in the first one, the problem may be in the adrenal gland. Second, it may be in the pituitary gland, which we also call it as Cushing's disease. Third, it can be due to ectopic ACTH production. And finally, it can be due to iatrogenic, uh, which is which in turn is due to the exogenous administration of steroids. Okay, so these are the four major causes. Now we will see how to identify what is the exact cause for the particular patient. So for that, to identify the cause, first you should go for measurement of serum ACTH level. The normal serum ACTH level is 10 to 60 picogram per ml. Where in adrenal Cushing syndrome and in iatrogenic disorders, what will happen means there is no problem with the pituitary gland. So the negative feedback mechanism is intact. So what will happen means both in adrenal Cushing and iatrogenic Cushing syndrome, due to the excess cortisol level in the blood, it leads to negative feedback inhibition and they will suppress the ACTH production. So in adrenal and iatrogenic Cushing syndrome, the ACTH level will be decreased. Whereas on the other hand, pituitary Cushing syndrome and ectopic ACTH production, ACTH levels will be increased. Okay. So with ACTH level alone, you can narrow down to two causes. Okay. So either it is, if it is decreased means it is adrenal Cushing syndrome or iatrogenic. Iatrogenic easily you can identify from the, um, the history or other, or in other words, in such cases, you can go for the uh, CT adrenal gland to rule out the masses in adrenal uh, gland or to rule out the adrenal Cushing syndrome. Coming to the other part, when ACTH level is more, you have to identify whether that ACTH is produced from pituitary or from the ectopic side. For that, you can go for an another test called as high dose dexamethasone suppression test. So here, 2 mg of dexamethasone will be given every 6th hourly for next 2 days. After that, the cortisol level will be again measured. So this time, if the cortisol levels are decreased less than 50% than compared to the earlier time, that means if the disease is present in the pituitary, okay, so that means it is called as Cushing's disease. But even after high dose dexamethasone suppression, if the ACTH level and the cortisol levels are not changed, then it is due to ectopic ACTH production. So this is how the various causes of Cushing syndrome can be identified by the simple measurement of serum ACTH and high dose dexamethasone suppression test with these two tests and we can easily make out where the exact pathology is. Okay, so and as an alternative for this high dose dexamethasone suppression test, we can also use CRH stimulation test, corticotrophin releasing hormone stimulation test can also be done to differentiate between uh, pituitary as well and ectopic ACTH production. Okay, so this is how uh, Cushing syndrome is diagnosed and the cause is identified uh, and the causes are identified. These are the major causes for Cushing syndrome. Next, we will move on to Conn syndrome, which is otherwise called as primary hyperaldosteronism. Whenever a patient comes to you with the signs of hyperaldosteronism, that means hypokalemia, hypernatremia, hypertension. Okay, so we, they come with these typical symptoms. It is better to test their aldosterone level. Okay, if this aldosterone level is more than 4 to 450 picomoles per liter, then you can confirm that the patient is suffering from hyperaldosteronism. Sometimes this excess aldosterone may be due to excess renin production from other causes. So in such cases, there is no pathology with the adrenal gland. Primary hyperaldosteronism means there should be a problem with the adrenal gland, which should be producing excess aldosterone. Okay, but sometimes the excess aldosterone can also be due to renin. To rule out that, what we can do is, along with aldosterone estimation, you can also go for aldosterone renin ratio estimation. When the aldosterone level is more than 450 picomoles per liter and the ratio is more than 750 picomoles per liter per nanogram per ml per hour, then you can easily uh, suspect that the patient is suffering from primary hyperaldosteronism. Okay, so with this only you can suspect, but if you want to confirm, you have to go for either saline loading test or for fludrocortisone suppression test. So what is the saline loading test means? The patient will be given excess saline. Okay, normal uh, saline sodium chloride will be uh, loaded in extra dose. Okay, so this extra saline will lead to hypernatremia. 
Okay, so what is the effect of this hypernatremia on renin angiotensin system means it will be suppressed, renin production will be suppressed, so ultimately aldosterone levels should also be decreased. Okay, so in a normal person, after saline loading, the aldosterone level should go less than 140 picomoles per liter. But if it fails to go less than 140 picomoles per liter, then we can make the diagnosis as primary hyperaldosteronism. We can confirm the diagnosis. Okay. Next, alternatively, we can also go for fludrocortisone suppression test. Okay. This is almost similar to dexamethasone suppression test. Dexamethasone is a artificial cortisol, whereas fludrocortisone is a artificial mineralocorticoid, aldosterone. Okay. So, when you give this in uh, excess to the patient, so this by feedback mechanism, it will suppress the renin production and in turn, it should suppress the aldosterone levels. Okay. But if it fails to suppress, then we can confirm the diagnosis as primary hyperaldosteronism or called as con syndrome. Okay. So, in con syndrome, we can use aldosterone levels or aldosterone renin ratio for screening test. While for confirming the diagnosis, you should go for either saline loading test or fludrocortisone suppression test. That's it about con syndrome and Cushing syndrome. Okay. The excess production of the hormones. Next, we will move on to the decreased production of hormones, which we will be seeing in adrenal insufficiency. This adrenal insufficiency can be again broadly classified into three types, primary, secondary and tertiary based on the site of lesion. If the lesion is in uh, adrenal gland, then it is called as primary adrenal insufficiency. If the problem is with the pituitary, we call it as secondary and if it is with hypothalamus, we call it as tertiary. Among all these three, the most commonest adrenal insufficiency is due to primary disorder, which is also called as Addison's disease. Okay, so now we will see how to diagnose this uh, adrenal insufficiency and how to identify the cause, whether it is primary, secondary or tertiary, we will see in detail. Okay, so first to confirm the diagnosis, whenever patient comes to you with the symptoms of adrenal insufficiency, first you should confirm the diagnosis that the patient is suffering from adrenal insufficiency. For that, what you can do is you can measure serum cortisol level after stimulation by extra uh, synthetic ACTH. Okay. So from extra, uh, from outside, you will be supplementing ACTH around 250 microgram of ACTH will be supplemented. After that, the serum cortisol level will be measured. So whenever you give ACTH uh, from outside, what will happen? This ACTH will go and stimulate the adrenal gland and they will increase the cortisol production. So normally the cortisol level should be more than 18 to 20 micrograms per deciliter. But if it is not failing to increase more than that, we, it, it tells you that the patient is suffering from adrenal insufficiency. Okay. So normally after the ACTH, it should go more than 18 to 20. That is normal in normal person. If it is not going more than 18 to 20, if it is less than 18 to 20, then you can confirm the diagnosis as adrenal insufficiency. Alternatively, you can also go for insulin tolerance tests. Okay, so in glucose tolerance test, what we do, we give glucose and we serially measure the glucose levels. Here, just the uh, opposite. Okay, here we will be giving insulin and then we will be measuring the glucose level serially. Okay, so when you give insulin, what will happen to the glucose levels? It should decrease, but it will never go for hypoglycemia because of the action of counter regulatory hormones. Whereas in adrenal insufficiency, as one of the counter regulatory hormone will not be produced, the patient can go for hypoglycemia. Okay, so that is how we can confirm the diagnosis of primary adrenal insufficiency. Okay, so once you confirmed the diagnosis, next you have to identify the cause, whether it is primary, secondary or tertiary. So to identify that, you have to measure serum ACTH level, renin and aldosterone levels. So these three uh, parameters has to be measured in the serum. Okay, so when you measure it, suppose if it is a primary disorder, that means if the pathology is in the adrenal gland, what will happen means the aldosterone will be decreased because uh, adrenal gland cannot produce aldosterone. But as the pituitary and hypothalamus are intact, what will happen? Pituitary is also intact. Renin, renin angiotensin system is also intact. Okay. So by uh, feedback uh, mechanism, there will be excess production of ACTH and renin. Okay. So when aldosterone is low and uh, ACTH and renin are high, then you can confirm that the patient is suffering from primary adrenal insufficiency, which is otherwise called as Addison's disease. Okay. On the other hand, if ACTH is low and renin and aldosterone levels are normal, then it is due to secondary or tertiary disorders. Okay. So in secondary and tertiary means 
uh, hypothalamus and pituitary is not working okay if it is not working ACTH will not be produced that's why the ACTH levels are low okay whereas so if ACTH is not produced cortisol will, all, will also be not produced so cortisol level will decrease but renin and aldosterone levels okay aldosterone is not dependent on ACTH it is dependent on renin so that system will be working that is the reason in secondary and tertiary adrenal insufficiency you will not be having any symptoms of mineralocorticoid deficiency okay you'll be having symptoms of glucocorticoid deficiency but not mineralocorticoid deficiency okay so this is how you can differentiate whether it is primary or not okay alternatively you can also go for multiple day ACTH stimulation tests even after multiple uh, uh, AC, uh, multiple day ACTH that means even after excess dose of ACTH is given if there is no change in the um, uh, 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 cortisol level, that means the problem is still in the, it is in the adrenal gland. That means the problem is primary disorder. Okay, you are giving excess ACTH. But if the adrenal gland is not functioning, how much ever you stimulate, it cannot produce the cortisol level. Okay, so even after multiple day ACTH stimulation test, if cortisol level is not increasing then it is primary disorder if it is increasing then it can be either secondary or tertiary disorder okay so this is how we can differentiate uh, whether it is primary or not okay so if it is not primary you have to identify whether it is secondary or tertiary okay so how we can differentiate secondary and tertiary means by crh stimulation test so here uh, artificial crh will be given from outside okay so if the crh is given from outside Suppose the problem is in the pituitary gland. How much ever state CRH you give, the pituitary cannot produce ACTH. Okay. So if ACTH is not produced, cortisol will also not be produced. Okay. So even after CRH stimulation, if cortisol levels or ACTH levels are not increasing, then it is secondary disorder. That means due to pituitary problem. But if after CRH, if it is increasing means the problem was in the hypothalamus. Now, since we have given CRH from outside, the adrenal uh, ACTH level and cortisol level will also both will be increasing. Okay, so this is how by CRH stimulation test, we can differentiate whether it is secondary disorder, whether the problem is in the pituitary or in the hypothalamus. Okay, so this is how um, uh, adrenal insufficiency can be diagnosed and the causes can be identified okay so that's it about adrenal function test this is how adrenal various adrenal function tests are used to diagnose the various adrenal gland disorders thank you